I'm really interested in it, and I think a lot of people in the security field sort of should be as well, uh, and that's escape hatches for rollups. You've heard a lot about rollups, uh, so let's give a brief introduction about what they are, and then we'll talk about the specific feature I care about, and then we'll talk about some features that uh, those features should have, so what a good rollup might want. Um, so this will be sort of similar to my colleague's talk from earlier, except not bridges, but... Uh, okay, so what is a rollup? Well, if you you know, attended a lot of these talks here at DoveCon or elsewhere, you know, you've seen a bunch of more or less, you know, mutually consistent definitions. But essentially, it's some sort of layer two scaling solution or maybe layer three or layer four if you're really forward thinking. Um, and it's some system that just takes transactions and executes them off chain and then batches them and compresses them and does something to get you some sort of savings and pushes some data onto layer one. And so essentially, it's a system that's replicating your layer one blockchain like Ethereum but it's doing it elsewhere with some nice advantage that gives you, you know, scalability in, in some sense, or savings. And so how does the system work? Well, usually you get some transactions, and then your system design is very dependent on the implementation, but typically there's something called a sequencer that gives an order to the transactions that are taken, and then this order of tra ordered set of transactions is executed in some state transition function, the state is updated, and something gets pushed to your layer one chain, where it's, you know, eventually considered final. But uh, this is great when everything works, but what happens when things don't work? In particular, if your sequencer goes offline, or some other component possibly, but typically these um, escape patches are discussed in the context of uh, sequencer failures, what happens? Because if you had a bunch of money or assets or tokens locked up in one of these rollups, and suddenly the transaction that says, give me my money back is no longer sequenced, you're kind of screwed. So uh, the functionality of an escape hatch is some way to get program state or digital assets, because you know con uh, tokens are basically just program state, off of this rollup system, even when your sequencer or some other component has failed. Now, obviously, there's some sort of caveat. Some things probably can't fail and always work with an escape hatch, right? If you have a bug in your smart contract, maybe no escape hatch functionality is going to work, because maybe that's what's broken, but we'll talk about that. Uh, and, and some people have actually started to look at this. Uh, this, this list, thanks uh, to L2Beat, but rewritten for, for our paper, um, does suggest that, that various rollup projects right now are thinking about this and uh, trying to implement these solutions. Now, some of them have the none there. We're not going to talk about the specifics. And I'm also, unfortunately, not, I don't have enough time to talk about even one of these approaches. Uh, but if you are interested, let me know or go contact the project and say, hey, how do you do this? Uh, but even when they're implemented, they're often not exactly done. In some cases, the design is not well understood. In some cases, the code is literally a stub, and it says, you know, hey, it's going to come later. Um, but now that the rest of the rollup functionality is done, you know, like the ZK parts are all coming together, and everyone's got rollup state working, it's time to start thinking about this feature that you sort of kept pushing off and, you know, into the future. Because ultimately, while I hope this feature is never used by any rollup ever, we would like to see it exist so that if someone does have any issues, you know, you get your funds back and things work out in the user's favor. And then, you know, ideally you fix it and your rollup gets back up or whatever. So it's being done, but maybe not done all the time or, or entirely correctly. And so I'm going to discuss, you know, what I think some nice features would be in a rollup. Now, uh, these would vary, and just like in the cases for bridges, for features, some functionality is probably contradictory, and you can't necessarily do all of these at the same time. But there's some things that probably should be nice and obvious. First, um, you know, they should be well-engineered components of the system. Uh, they, that usually means you know, very modular, and in case you need to upgrade your rollup, you can upgrade part of it or all of it, or just this part. Maybe this is the only part that's concerning, because if you saw on that list, some people just force a transaction, whatever that means. Others suggest proposing new blocks, whatever, whatever that means. Um, but you know, this should be a full-fledged feature, not an afterthought. Second, it should be secure. We're, you know, big, we, we always think about security at Quantsnap, and certainly you know, a roll-up is essentially a bridge that's even more complicated. And we don't want to have to, you know, deal with exploits that arise for the rollup because of this functionality. If you do this, do it right, and you know, make sure you test it and audit it and all that. And finally, it should be correcting. You shouldn't really have to use um, consecutive escape hatches. Uh, this is a bit confusing, but I have heard some people say, uh, well, our plan for a rollup, 
um, escape hatch is to just migrate the state to another copy of our rollup and then everything will work. But as a user, am I going to be you know, really trusting of the same type of rollup that just went down on me? I'm not so sure that that's going to be the case. So ideally, something that gets you sort of out of the system, maybe correcting is not the best name, uh, is something that I'd like to see personally. But beyond that, uh, we can think a little bit deeper about what it means to escape from a rollup. Roll um, in particular, if you're taking assets out, that's pretty well understood. And a lot of them do have functionality for forcing transactions for ERC-20 tokens, for example. But what do you actually really want to escape? Maybe you want to escape more than just ERC-20 tokens. Uh, you know, the obvious case is what if you have an NFT minted on your rollup? Obviously, you probably want that back too without having to go through extra hoops. Uh, this also very much depends on the actual bridging that's being done, but you know, maybe there's some other things you want that are valuable to you. They should be built in. If you have uh, a DAP that you have on L1, you should sort of migrate it to L2 and sort of expect minimal extra friction introduced by this feature. So in particular, if that DAP is supposed to escape some some state as part of this functionality, it should come for free, in air quotes, because uh, doing extra work sucks. And finally, it should be transaction efficient on the layer underneath. Uh, if you escape from a, a layer two rollup and everyone else is trying to do this, uh, there's going to be a gas war and things are going to get expensive and things are going to get messy. If you can do this in a nice way that aggregates you know, many user state or does something clever, uh, I think that's, that's really the, the way to go. Now, I'm not saying I have solutions for these, but that's just what I want to see. Uh, some other properties would be really nice, be global. Uh, so in particular, um, if you call an escape hatch functionality, you don't have to do it for every dApp that you've deployed on that L2. So if I'm using Uniswap and something else on some rollup, I want to just say escape everything, not escape Uniswap, and then also escape whatever the other dApp is. That would be ideal. Uh, it'd make my life a lot easier. And it should be automatic and live. Uh, ideally, it's always available because who knows when the system could go down. Hopefully never, but you know, if it does, we don't know when it'll be. And it should be triggered hopefully automatically, so we're not depending too much on social consensus. I mean, it might be unavoidable, but it should be you know, very clear when you can um, trigger this functionality and when you want to do that, it should be available to you. Or at least the community should be able to make the decision. But automatic would be you know, ideal. So, that's what I think they should do. Have I missed anything? Please let me know. Do you disagree? Please also let me know. Uh, you can contact me on email or Twitter there. Find me around here. And we do have a write-up of this at um, a non-blockchain conference. Uh, so I can send you some papers about that. Thank you.